I can relate to this move because I also did karate at an early age like the character Ter in the movie. Started his karate around 2009 to 2010. I started my karate in the 8th grade. I was only 13 years old in 2004 over 20 years ago. It's not exactly easy thing to do the Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan starring the Karate Kid 2010 and its predecessor the Ralph Macchio and Pat Morita starring the Karate Kid 1984 as a unique balance of yin-yang philosophy seeped in martial traditions and chances or you'll probably never recognize it unless you understand martial arts history. Taiji, Agata Kaichuan, and read this review. Apart from being filled with respectful nods to the original version, the Chan Slash Smith remake is also filled with superior martial arts and fine choreography compared to the Macchio Slash Marita rendition. Yet it is both of the film's use of animal styles of kung fu that subliminally ties the two movies together on an esoteric level that goes beyond the fish-out-of-water storylines. Let me first share that as a film critic and fan I totally enjoyed this film. As a fight choreographer in Asia and Hollywood, the martial choreography was pretty good, with one major mistake that at the end of the day does not break the film. However, there is one glaring event about the movie that in my view is bordering on disrespect to Jackie Chan, something that undoubtedly was a result of Will Smith and his wife Yada Pinky Smith being the producers and, of course, the parents of Jaden. If you've seen The Karate Kid, more like The Kung Fu Kid, then you've seen The Karate Kid. In 1984, Daniel and his mother move from New Jersey to California, and Daniel quickly finds out that the black-haired Italian lad doesn't fit in with blunt surfer dudes. Pining to go home, he meets a beautiful lass who's the girlfriend of the local karate-trained bully who learns martial arts from a maniacal martial arts teacher that teaches that martial arts is about fighting, the mercy no compassion for your opponent. Kind of sounds like today's MMA fighters. If. Support him deepers. And if, Daniel gets the living daylights beaten out of him and just as the karate bully and his minions are about to send him to the hospital for good, the elderly martial arts master Mr. Miyagi appears from nowhere to save the day. Miyagi ends up confronting the evil martial arts teacher and inadvertently lays down a gauntlet. Miyagi will teach Daniel karate so he can fairly fight the karate bully in an upcoming karate tournament. Daniel is confused as his karate training is all about painting fences and waxing cars. If. Support him deepers. And if, Karate Kid, minus 2 in 2010, 12, year old Aaron is my move from Detroit to Beijing, and I rapidly learns that a black American kid, culturally, linguistically and racially doesn't fit into Chinese society. Begging his mom to go home, he meets a cute Chinese girl who's under the thumb of a feared kung fu Chinese bully who learns kung fu from a deranged, cruel kung fu safe teacher. When the bully and his mates are about to kick the crap out of Dare, a local handyman Han, Chan, saves him and then agrees to teach Dare Kung Fu so he can fight the bully fair and square in an upcoming Kung Fu competition. Dare is befuddled that before he can learn Kung Fu he must hang up his jacket 1000 times. If. Support him deepers. And if, what is so sad about this karate kid is the way Jackie Chan is being treated by the filmmakers. How does the number one action martial arts star of the past 32 years in the genre's top martial arts film box office star, a man who has literally put his life on the line for martial arts films and has almost died several times because of it, get second billing to essentially a 12-year-old rookie actor? To me, that is a disrespectful DISS on Chan a man. He didn't even get equal billing. We of course know the reason why. Father Will and Mother Yada should be ashamed of this oversight. That being said, Jaden's emotional MSV keeps the film's reality moving forward under a very real story. It is actually something I went through back in the 1970s when I moved to the Republic of China to learn martial arts in Kagong as a means to save my life, of which when I arrived there I had one year left to live due to the deadly effects of cystic fibrosis. So I could totally associate with Deb being a foreigner in China, who can't speak the language and is trying to fit in as his world collapses around him. Most at some point in their lives can associate with being an outcast, so the emotional content of the movie strikes home on many levels. Jaden's martial arts acting performance stemming from three months of intensive wash training, wash is a sport and not traditional martial arts training, fits well into the film. If he sticks with it, he may one day become a good martial artist. If. Support him deepers. And if, Karate Kid, minus three so what's with the yin yang tie-in between the two Karate Kid productions, and how does Taiji fit into all of this? In 1984, Daniel's signature move was the white crane stance, standing on one leg, arms held up and out to his sides like bird wings, that ends with a jumping front kick. In 2010, Dress' signature technique is the snake stance, standing on one leg, arms extended out from his body, hands pointing at his opponent like cobra heads, that climaxes with a jumping spinning flip kick. 
part of Karate Kid, was shot at Wudong Mountain. Cho Martial Law tells that former Shaolin monk Shang Sanfeng created Taiji in 1365. After leaving Shaolin Temple, Shang came upon the Wudong Mountains during his travels. Awed by their majesty, he ended up living there and developed a new school of martial arts known as Wudong. Modern audiences may be familiar with the term as Wu-Tang as in the rapper's Wu-Tang clan. As legend goes, one day Zhang saw two animals fighting, the balance of the animals made it impossible for one to beat the other. From this Zhang created Taiji. The animals. White Crane and Snake. The actual origin of Snake Fist is relatively unknown, though it perhaps arose during the late Song Dynasty. The style evolved via copying the Kodbura, Viper and Python. The fighter's hands, fingers and legs represent the snake's head, tongue and tail, respectively. In Karate Kid, they focused on the Kodbura, where the correct arm and hand position should have the forearm held at a 90-degree angle to the upper arm, the wrist bent downward, and an open hand with fingers pointing at the opponent and thumb curled underneath the hand to maintain dynamic tension. The Kodbura hypnotically sways back and forth, and then quickly strikes at the body's vital points. Dare is inspired to learn the Kodbura from a female, practicing the skill. However, the actress was not practicing traditional snake kung fu but the wash version, and you can tell this because the thumbs were not curled underneath the hand but were pressed against the forefingers, like in the karate chop fashion. This of course is little bearing on the film, but just thought you might like to know the difference between the real martial arts and the real martial arts. Category. Martial arts.